Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I am really excited to share with you a new product that I have always been hoping for, and it's like my dreams and prayers were answered because something amazing has just been put on the market. Now, you know how much I love pressure cooking and how much I love my Instant Pot. Instant Pot to me is awesome. One of the best things in the world certainly has helped me out a great deal in the kitchen and has revolutionized the way that I cook. Quicker, easier, awesome. Now that being said, sometimes when I'm done pressure cooking, I want to crisp up my food a little bit, whether it be to get some chicken wings with a little bit of a crispy edge, or maybe make like a pasta like a mac and cheese and put a nice crust on top. I have to put it in the oven to do those things, or separately put it in an air fryer. Now there are a lot of other brands out there tapping into the electric pressure cooker market, and frankly, I've never been interested in any of them because I love my Instant Pot so much, it's so reliable, it's like the number one in the space, that I'm like, you know what, I don't need to even bother with it. And it used to be like revolutionary and have something extra special for me to be interested. Well guess what guys, that time has come. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could take the likes of two awesome but large kitchen appliances such as an air fryer and an electric pressure cooker like the Instant Pot and then take the two of them and combine it into this one appliance. Folks, this thing here is called the Ninja Foodie where it can do both pressure cooking with the lid that you see on it right now on top and air frying or tender crisping which Ninja calls it thanks to the lid on the left. Now the lid on the left is always going to have to stay up whenever the pressure cooking lid is on there that's just the way it works but whenever you're air frying the pressure cooking lid comes off and the air frying or tender crisp lid comes down. That's how this thing works. So we have two lids, two different purposes. One for tender crisping or air frying, and then one for pressure cooking. Very convenient, no? All right, so now let's focus on the control panel of the Ninja Foodi. We have a power button here, so whenever it's plugged in, which it is right now, it's not always gonna display off like the Instant Pot does. So click on that and now the power is on. And now let's take a look at the display here. We have four little alphanumeric number display thingies here. It can say little words or abbreviate words, and it has timing on it. It's very simple, and that's exactly how I like it. Nice and easy. As for our buttons, we simply have temperature here, time here, and up and down easily, and then we have pressure cook here, steam, slow cook, or sear slash saute. In my opinion, that's really all that you need, unless you got a yogurt function, which the Ninja does not seem to have. Of course, as you know, my recipes, I mostly just use the saute or sear slash saute button now and the pressure cook button. But now that we have the wonderful, wonderful addition of being able to air fry, I'll also be using the air crisp feature a lot or broil if you wanted to, you know, broil some cheese on top of something when it's done. Perfect for that. You can also dehydrate with this, guys. That means you can suck all the air and water out of some fruits, out of some vegetables, even some meat. You can make jerky, I guess. And maybe I'll try some recipes there. And then you simply have a keep warm button to keep everything warm and so it's, you know, not going to get cold. And then you have your start and stop button, which is self-explanatory. So, for instance, let's say I want to pressure cook something. I'm just going to hit the pressure button. Um, it's telling me to put the lid on, so I have to take this one up. And I can't take it off. It's always going to just lean up just like that. And the way for it to properly line up is you'll see there's a little arrow here on the lid that meets a little arrow here on the bottom of the unit itself. And just turn it. Sealed. And now I want to adjust my temperature for high or low pressure. I always cook pretty much always on high pressure, so I'll leave it on high. And now I adjust the time with this. Let's say I want to go only for five minutes. Five minutes, it's on pressure, and then just hit start. And it's that simple, guys. And look at that. This little icon here is going to light up this little blue thing here with steam. That means that it's in a pressure cooking function. If I want to stop the cooking process, I hit stop. Now for pressure cooking, you're going to notice the lid is incredibly similar to the Instant Pot. It has a seal slash vent thing going on here, which you do manually. It has a little pin that pops up when it comes to pressure, this little red pin here. And the other side of the lid is pretty much also identical, where it has the silicone sealing ring, and it has a little guard here for the valve that pops up, as well as a little uh, cleaning device for the vent here. It's all pretty much exactly the same. Except the outside is more of a plastic look. It's easily scratched, as I've already scratched mine up a little bit, which is fine, but uh, it has more of a plastic feel, and you would not put this in a dishwasher. I know some people put their Instant Pot lids in the dishwasher. This one, you would not do, and in fact, it says in the instructions, do not put this in the dishwasher washer the plastic is not going to be friendly for it so you want to wash this by hand whenever you clean it out and subsequently if I want to air fry or tender crisp I will then hit whichever one of these I want which I'm mostly probably ever going to always use air crisp 
and from there you can control the temperature, but it chooses what you can control it at. You can't go by the degree per se. I can go from 375 to 360 or 360 to 350, but I can't go to like 375 to 365. It has to be 360. Um, and the max it can go is 400. So I guess just trust it there. I would typically mostly go between like 370 and 400 anyway when I air crisp. Now let's say I want to start it then. You're gonna see now the red thing lights up on the right side, which means that it's air crisping or you know air frying. And it'll count down, which I like in this, seconds on the right and minutes on the left. If you're cooking for over an hour, it will only show the hour display, so it'll be like 60. But once it breaks under 60 minutes, it'll start counting down in the seconds on the right and the minutes on the left. Now one of the greatest things about this with the air frying is you can check on things easily. Instead of having a drawer on the other one, you have to pull it out. This one you simply lift the lid how it is, it will remember where the time left off, so we're at 19 minutes and 38 seconds left. Check on your things, shake it around if you want to do a little bit of shaking of wings or french fries or whatever you have going on in there, do a little stir, and then when you're done, simply close the lid down again and it's going to resume exactly where it left off, which is very nice. So don't hit the stop button there because if you do that when you're checking, what it's going to do is after about five seconds it's going to reset itself um, which we don't want to do because it will totally forget where we left off in terms of the time and you see that we have to reprogram everything which is annoying so just lift the top up and then lift it back down if you want to check on it simple and easy another thing that I love about this product which is great with ninja products they're so smart is that it can tell which lid is on there and it will only let up the options available for what you have for instance let's say right now I accidentally am gonna hit the crisp button it's gonna tell me to shut the lid because it this has to basically be shut down to do anything first and then it's going to start doing what I want it to do and to that point if a tender crisp lid is already down and I want to start hitting the pressure cooking functions it's going to tell me to put the other lid on so you won't let you do anything unless the right lid is on top and then I can do it you see that so you guys might be asking Jeff what comes with the ninja foodie an excellent question well, first and foremost, you have your liner pot, which is necessary to cook everything in. Except instead of it being stainless steel and six quart, as many Instant Pot models are, this is six and a half quarts, and it's non-stick, which is gonna be actually very convenient for when you're making pastas or casseroles right inside. Nothing's gonna stick to it. You just have to, of course, be careful, and I would suggest using like plastic or wooden spoons instead of metal ones, otherwise you might scrape this up a bit. Also, because this has air frying capabilities, it has an air frying basket, which you can put basically anything inside of like wings or mozzarella sticks or if you want to fry up okra or whatever thing of that nature put that right in here and then you rest that inside of the liner pot and it just sits in there like that very simple also on the bottom of the fryer basket you have this little thing here like this little pinwheel that's basically a support that rests in the liner pot but you can remove it for cleaning if you'd like you can easily remove it it pops right off just got all the edges and there it goes, like a little uh, propeller it looks like. You can just wash it and then you can easily just pop it right back on. And then, you know, just you know, save it for later for using again or whatever. Furthermore, it comes with this like amazing trivet right here where you can lay it in your pot when you're cooking just like this and put whatever on it and it can easily be lifted up with these handles like this. Or if you're finishing it up with a tender crisp or air fry, you flip it this way and look, it rests that way. You could put, you know, some French onion chicken on there with the cheese and broil it on top directly. If you want to put some wings on there, you can do it like that. You could put some ribs on there and slather some barbecue sauce on instead of throwing it in the oven afterwards. Super convenient. I love a nice two-way trivet and look at that it opens up like this too it's fabulous it also comes with these amazing silicone puppets now um, little oven mitts how cute are these look they don't even have to cover up your whole hand just this little part I feel like the penguin from the Batman movie you know it's really cute and adorable and easy to lift your pot out of there without burning yourself and having to get a dish rag nice touch and my favorite thing is that it comes with not one but two back scratchers look at that no, these aren't back scratchers. No, but really, these things are actually meant to dig into like a chicken or a turkey or a roast and you can easily pick it out. Now, actually, these little ends here, the little black things come off and you see they have these sharp little tips and it's going to dig in nice and easy to get them out. Or like I said, if you really wanted to use it as like a head or back scratcher, you can. Just wash them if you've touched your hair with these before you dig it into meat. And of course, you come with your lid for your pressure cooking stages. And the tender crisp slash air frying lid will always remain in place on this guy. It's always either going to be in the up position so you can pressure cook. See that? This has to be up for the pressure cooking lid to go on. Or if you're air frying or tender crisping, this just comes down. All right, so I'm going to give you an example of starting something out by pressure cooking and then finishing it up with a little bit of a tender crisp. I'm going to make my mac and cheese here so easy. I'll link the recipe. But here's the ingredients that go right into the pot before we pressure cook. 
And as you notice, the tender crisp lid is nice and up because it has to be in order for me to put my pressure cooking lid on top. So let's get this on, make sure we're in ceiling position. There we go, this is ceiling and that's vent, just like the Instant Pot. And now I wanna come down to my control panel and hit the pressure button, and I wanna be at high pressure, and I wanna go on this, guys, for just six minutes, that's it, and hit the start button. Now, as it's coming to pressure, you're going to, first of all, see the little blue icon here. On the left side, the blue little steam icon means pressure cooking. The little red air icon here that'll light up is when you're going to be air frying or tender crisping. As it is coming to pressure, you're going to see this little d -d 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 this little chasing light sequence. It looks like a marquee outside of a theater. Instead of saying on on the Instant Pot, it would say on as it's coming to pressure. It's going to be like that until it's coming to pressure. Once the pin pops up, it'll start counting down to the time we set it for, in this case, six minutes. And there you see it, the pin pops up just like on in the Instant Pot when it's reached pressure. And there we go, we just started counting down from six minutes, only about a minute after the pin popped up. And now that we're done cooking, let's do a quick release. And you'll also notice that like the Instant Pot, when it's done cooking, it'll go onto the keep warm setting and it'll start counting up, except you have it counting up in minutes and seconds. So you have the seconds on the right and the minutes on the left, very convenient. And the pin just drops. All right, now let's take our lid off. Looking good. So now let's just stir everything up in the pot. It's gonna be a little bit liquidy, which is exactly how we want it. And then let's mix in all of our cheese. And I'm also noticing here when I stir the pot that the liner pot doesn't really spin around as much as the Instant Pots does, which is nice. It's almost like there's a little bit more traction here, which I love. And then once everything's melted together into some seriously ooey gooey mac and cheese, I am talking the cheesiest, ooeyest, gooeyest mac and cheese ever, we are now going to top it off and do something in this that we couldn't do in another pressure cooker. And that is going to be to give it a nice little crust and to bake it on right in the pot, all one pot. I know, right? I'm so excited. So let's take a roll of Ritz crackers and smash them up. And then let's take three quarters of a stick of butter and melt it. And then pour the butter over the crackers and then mix together until well combined. And now let's go back to our Ninja Foodi and then just sprinkle all of our crust on top of our mac and cheese. Just smooth it out so you can get all of it nice and covered. Very good. And now we will lower our tender crisp lid. And then I'm going to hit the air crisp button and I want to go for, I don't know, I'm going to go down to 375 is fine. And I want to go for only about, I'd say, five minutes. And I'm going to check on it when I go and then hit the start button. And there you go. It turned red because the red one over here on the right means it's going under the tender crisp or air frying thing. That's like the, the hot air, the red. And on the left, the blue is like the pressure cooking when it's steaming because like, apparently steam is blue. and heat is red uh, you know anyway let it go and we are done cooking it's gonna say cool for a few moments and then it's going to be all finished it just does a quick little cooling cycle and ta-da we're done and let's lift off our tender crisp lid and oh look at that the perfect crust just how I like it look at that all-in-one pot didn't have to take it out of here and put it into the oven and because it's a non-stick pan nothing is going to stick to the bottom not even the ooey gooey cheesiness look at that so easy love this all right let me try some of this out and here we go with the amazing buttery crust and oh yeah uh, that alone is just beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm, the easiest mac and cheese you'll ever make. And you can not only cook it all together without having to strain the pasta in one pot and pressure cook it, but then you can crisp the crust on top after. Huh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And just think about what you could do if you had wings in there, crisping some wings or some ribs by crisping some ribs on the top and caramelizing them with some barbecue sauce, or even taking like Brussels sprouts out of there and then throwing them in on the very top at the end and then having a little bit of a crisp, roasty top. It's amazing that I can do all these things all in one pot, super convenient. In fact, while you're here, let me just show you how to make super juicy and super crispy chicken wings in there all at the same time. So let's start off by adding some chicken wings to the pot and then follow it up by adding in some chicken broth as well. Just about a cup worth is totally fine. And now let's secure our lid on top of the pot and then make sure we're in sealing position. Okay, and you see when the pressure lid is sealed, it only gives me the pressure cooking options. And when the tender crisp lid is down, it's only gonna give me the tender crisp options. So there's no way to confuse anything. So let's hit the pressure button. We wanna be at high pressure and we wanna go on this guys for eight minutes, that's it. And now that we're done cooking, let's do a quick release. And our pin just dropped, so let's remove our lid. 
And there are our lovely chicken wings. Okay, let's take some tongs and remove them from the pot and place them in a bowl, just like so. And now let's remove and drain our liquid from the pot. And then return our liner pot. It's okay if it still has a little bit of liquid in there. And now let's take that amazing trivet that looks like this and make sure we have it on the taller side going on here. So it's just like this and fits in perfectly. And let's place our wings on top, as many as you want to fit. Okay, perfect. And now let's take our amazing glaze and glaze our wings nice and good. Get them all nice and garlic parmesan-y. Now we're going to lower our tender crisp lid. And I'm going to hit broil because I feel like broil is the best way to finish off already cooked wings. So I'm going to go for eight minutes and that's it. Hit start. Okay, and now we're done with our air crisping slash broiling slash tender crisping. And uh, we are now going to lift the lid up as soon as it says that it is done, just like it does now. All right, now let's check it out. And oh, look at those beautiful crispy wings. I love it. All right, let's put some of them in a bowl and then try them out. Oh, these are going to be delicious. And if you have some marinade left over, you can put some of that over the wings as well for some extra sauce. And look at all of my beautiful garlic parmesan wings. Which one do I want to take? I'll take you. There we go. Let's try it out. So excited. Oh, yeah. That is one flavorful, delicious wing. So the meat on this thing couldn't be more moist or tender. It's so juicy and delicious. And the coating is the perfect level of crisp that I want for this. It's just absolutely perfect for a, a wonderful wing. It's like the best oven-baked wing without ever going into an oven. Okay, now let me show you something how you can just use it without even having to pressure cook anything. You can just use it as an air fryer or like a mini convection oven because that's basically what an air fryer is. Watch this. I'm going to put my liner pot inside the foodie as well as the little basket. And I'm going to throw in some mozzarella sticks. I got these at Costco. I love them so much. I'm just going to put four in there because it's just me for now and I don't want to really become the size of a house. And I'm going to put my lid on and just like by bringing it down, I don't use the pressure cooking lid for this. I use the lid that's already attached to it, the tender crisp lid. And now I want to come down on my control panel, and under the tender crisp bracket, I have three options. I have air crisp or air fry, bake or roast, and broil. And since I'm going to basically be treating this like I would in my oven, I'm going to hit the bake button here. I want to go for about 350 degrees, and I want to go for no more than, I'd say, eight minutes. And our seconds are counting down on the right, and our minutes on the left. And then about midway through the cooking process, I'm going to lift my lid up. And then just give my little mozzarella sticks here a little flip with some tongs to make sure that they're going to be evenly cooked. And then I'll just lower my lid. It's going to remember exactly where it left off in terms of time and continue the process until finished. And we finished cooking. And when you're done air frying, it's going to say cool for a few moments. So just let that, you know, do its cycle here. And then it'll turn itself off when it's all said and done. And it'll say done. All right, let's lift the lid up and check it out. And now let's check out how it came out. And oh, we are looking perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, the perfect mozzarella stick. Watch this. Mmm, that's how I like it. Perfect. Perfect. And I didn't even have to spray any oil or anything on this. It cooked perfectly and it's like deep fried quality. Except it wasn't deep fried, it was air fried. It's perfect without having to heat up the entire kitchen. Amazing, amazing feature. Let's try some french fries too. I'm going to close my lid and I'm going to hit the bake roast button under the tender crisp option and I'm going to go for 400 degrees for 15 minutes and that's it. And midway through, let's check on our fries and let's give them a little bit of a shake. They are looking fabulous and nice and crispy already. Perfect. Now let's just lower the lid and finish up the cooking. And we finished cooking, and let's check on them, and oh boy, those fries are done. Beautiful, crispy, let's try one out. I love the little curls, I like little pigtails. And wow, look at these perfect, crispy fries. I just love curly fries. I love it. All right, let's try one out. And this little piggy ate a pigtail. Perfection! It's perfect. It wasn't even fried in oil. I didn't have to spray oil on there to cook it. It just cooked to crispy, perfect perfection, and it tastes deep fried. Amazing. Forget using your oven anymore to make french fries or anything that have a fried nature. It, they have this thing to do it, and it's perfect for that. I totally have to go to the gym like 10 more times this week to make up for all the foods I'm eating in here, but I mean, somebody's got to show you how awesome this thing can cook things, right? It's a dirty job, but I mean, someone's got to do it. 
And then once I remove my basket, you're gonna see, because of the nonstick pan, how easily everything just wipes right off of it. Slides right off, all that grease comes right up. Cleanup is a snap. Now, just so you can get a side-by-side -side size comparison of the two, I have the Ninja Foodi, which is six and a half quarts on the left, and an Instant Pot six quart Duo Plus on the right. So we only have a half a quart larger in terms of a capacity with the Ninja, but it is at least like about a third larger in size, and it's a lot heavier if you're gonna carry the two around. It's not super portable like the Instant Pot is. Also, as you know, the Ninja has two lids. It has the permanent one here, which is the tender crisp or air frying lid which only lifts up just like this and never comes off it will always stay like that the side can never come off because look at that you see the little things there it's in a little track here to swivel up and down and you see underneath that the air fryer is really what it is is a convection oven and it has the coils as if you had an electric stove and then a fan behind that that blows the heat from the coils onto the food to crisp it. Also, when lifting the tender crisp lid up when you've just used it, make sure your hand never touches this part, guys, because you're gonna be in for a rude awakening if it does. There's a hot coil underneath this thing, so make sure you always use this little part here, the little lid, and use your fingers to open it. Just always be wary of that, all right? And then if you wanna pressure cook, you then have to put this lid on top and then shut it, just like so. And whenever you're pressure cooking, the air fryer lid will always stay up and open. So you have to make sure you have plenty of counter space for the footprint as well as height. Once the tender crisp top is open, it just misses my range. So it's almost a little bit awkward in terms of configuration. I feel like over time, as more feedback comes in and more models get released, it's gonna be more refined and more sleek in terms of its design. But for now, it's a little bit on the bulky side. But sometimes, you know, it's two sides of a coin. You have to sacrifice some bulk for some super convenient cooking all done in one device. No more having to take out anything from the Instant Pot per se, and if you want it to crisp up and put it into the oven, you don't have to do that. You do it right here, because when the food is done, you take the lid off and you lower the lid down just like so, and then you poof, you have an oven, you can air fry right there. It's as simple as that. So the Ninja takes up significantly more space in the Instant Pot, it's also significantly heavier, but you are getting a two for one product. So if you have an Instant Pot and you have an air fryer, and because I live in such a small kitchen here in Queens, I have to keep mine on top of my refrigerator, you can at least combine both of those gadgets now into one with the Ninja Foodi. So my final call on this is, if you're looking for both an electric pressure cooker and an air fryer, but only really have the space for one, the Ninja Foodi is an incredible, incredible option if you have the kitchen space and don't mind that the air frying lid has to always stay up while you're pressure cooking. So just make sure you have enough height space under your hood range or your cabinets or whatever. So the pros of this thing is that it's a pressure cooker and an air fryer all in one. The control panel is incredibly simple and foolproof. There's really no confusion on it at all and it's a great price. It can vary between $179 to $220 but the thought that most pressure cookers are about $100 bucks and air fryers about $150-ish, that's $250 for two separate devices. So if you're paying between you know like $180 to $220 for something that can do both and do them really well, it's a great value. Now some cons for you that I mentioned before is its footprint. This thing is called Bigfoot in my opinion and it's large. It's large. It's also a little bit awkward that that tender crisp lid has to always be up whenever you're pressure cooking. That's a little weird to me that you can't detach it. I understand that that lid needs power for the heating element and the convection fan to spin but there's no reason I feel like we can't just like plug it into a socket that's already inside of the base unit and then just push it down that way instead of it always having to be there. It's also definitely not as easy to transport as something like an Instant Pot. And the plastic they chose to use around the little exoskeleton can be easily scuffed. It scuffs up a little bit, but not such a big deal. So, should you get one of these to replace an already electric pressure cooker? Well, if you need more space and you really want to be able to crisp and air fry, it's certainly worth checking out. But if you just really are interested in pressure cooking and you don't need the air frying stuff, not necessary. I would only talk about a product that makes me thrilled, and this thing is really, really, really great as is an Instant Pot. I just hope that in the future that the Ninja Foodi can come out with a more uh, aesthetically pleasing design, make it a little less cumbersome around the kitchen. I understand the two lid need, which totally makes sense to me, but 
until you can find a way to combine them into just one lid, I would make it so that the opening and closing of the tender crisp lid can be detachable from the unit itself. That would really help save some space, save a little bit of awkwardness and some maneuvering of the unit. And while I love the control panel of the Ninja Foodi, it is so clean, so crisp, so easy to read, totally foolproof, without being bogged down with all these confusing and unnecessary presets, in my opinion, it would be nice if it had a yogurt feature on there, or like the Instant Pot Ultra, to have an altitude adjustment setting, and that it'd be nice if it had like a simulated sous vide feature like the Ultra does having the Ultra button on there. But the fact that you can not only pressure cook but then finish it off with a crisp in one device without ever having to turn your oven on and heating up the entire kitchen, well frankly that is so unbeatable that it's worth getting this product alone just so it can do that unbelievably great. This thing is a really, really great product. It is a game changer for sure, and I cannot wait to play with it and try some new recipes in it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Visit PressureLockCooking.com for all new awesome recipes. I have tons of them, and the thing will work beautifully with any recipe that I have. It's gonna be great. The controls couldn't be easier. And of course, Facebook.com slash PressureLockCooking to like that page for any new tips, any things like new items that come out, like this guy right over here. Uh, anything of that nature, humor, I got it all. And at PressureLock to follow me on YouTube, subscribe to me there, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. I hope you found this little review helpful, guys, and as for me, it's time to start playing around with it even more and trying some new recipes out. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? <laughs>